So now it's time to hear from um, more from a company perspective. So it's my great pleasure to introduce the next speaker. Uh, it's Karin Moberg, uh, CEO of Hollandia V. So welcome to the stage. Thank you. Here you go. Thank you very much. And um, I'm not only COO, but I'm also employee number one, which is quite important when it comes to startup lingo. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about, first, set the scene about Sharpec uh, and HVAB. We heard a little bit about it during the day, uh, but I'm going to tell you a little bit more about it. And I push... There we go. So, um, Sharpec and Hollandia VAB, we give um, care organizations what we call actionable insights. Uh, Marcus Lingman spoke about before that only data is not good enough. It doesn't create any change. You have to go through a process where you ensure that data is analyzed and that it creates insights. So our platform, the an analytics platform, that is prepared for AI and machine learning. Uh, we import all relevant uh, data into the database, and then we can give the organization a possibility to analyze it and get these insights and get the change process going that uh, Marcus Lingman was referring to uh, earlier today. Um, and we, it's also a platform where you are able to develop and deploy certified AI algorithms. We've heard that there are numbers of articles and papers out there today regarding AI algorithms. Well, I can tell you the FDA has, during 2019, only approved uh, 23 algorithms for deployment. So it's quite a uh, process to uh, take an algorithm from research into actual usage for the individual patient. Um, two important years for our company. Uh, it was founded in 2019, but more importantly, we stand on uh, a collaboration project that started here in Holland between the region and Boston. And we've heard about it today, and that um, collaboration is actually the foundation that we build upon. So we actually founded a company that will now commercialize the platform that was developed during that collaboration. So collaboration has been mentioned several times here today, and that is es the essence of uh, what we do and how we work. We believe firmly in collaboration. Um, and today we are taking new steps together with the university here in Halmstad and together with the region into further developing uh, the platform. And by the, in that way, we are creating value uh, for uh, one another. Um, and that leads me into generalizing a little bit about the business perspective on collaboration in this kind of environment. Um, We are, like I mentioned, a small company, and I've worked in large companies before, and there's a difference. Someone who's large, or maybe in the public sector, uh, you have to, like Pippi Longstrom, you have to be, she says, if you're large, you have to be kind. Um, we come from different perspectives. Uh, a small company um, needs to have a set a timeline. We heard about it before that we have a short time perspective from Peter and Peter uh, rather than the long perspective that is in the uh, public sector. It also goes on an individual level. If we can't commercialize the ideas that we are working on in Sharpec uh, and HVAB, uh, who's going to pay our salary? In, when you work in the public sector, there, there's you have your job and you have your salary there every day. Uh, and I think that is quite important to understand when one sets up a project, sets up a collaboration, that the, the companies struggle with finding finances uh, and being able to, ha to be in there in the, uh, for a really long run. And therefore, when projects in the public sector might come to an end, 
they're paused, they're halted. It's frustrating, extremely frustrating. It might be frustrating for someone working within the public sector as well, but you still have your salary. If there's no income, no project running in the, in the private, small private company, no salary. That's how it goes. And I think that perspective has to be understood and discussed. Because otherwise, I mean, there's a there are a lot of exciting things happening out there in small companies that can be of benefit for the public sector. And that's why I think this day is fantastic, talk, all this talk about collaboration. But when you start up a cl collaboration, it's quite important to look into what the different perspectives of the uh, different players in, in, in the uh, collaboration at stake or on hand. And um, how that changes how we work. Uh, this morning we heard about this uh, patient involvement from Jacob. I, I can't remember his family name, but he mentioned that he had been part of three projects. Two projects had been cancelled or halted b due to lack of fi finances. He was, he, he, he was not there as a company, but he still projected a sense of frustration when he uh, gave his talk this morning. And that is the same thing um, that we... Uh, when companies meet the public sector. Um, so it has to be much more, we have to be more clear, more understanding of the different perspectives for the, from the different parties and utilize uh, the push and pull that comes from having different perspectives and different agendas and different missions uh, because that is where the magic happens and the magic that happens is when value is created for all parties. I think I'll stop there. Perfect. Thank you so much, Corin. And uh, we'll get the opportunity to talk more in the panel in uh, just, uh, just a few minutes. So uh, thank you again. As a person with a background in UX design myself, it's a great pleasure to welcome a fellow UX designer up on stage. So please welcome Sophia Pernbad, UX designer at Visiba Care. Thank you welcome. very much. So, uh, hello everyone and uh, thank you for having me. My name is Sofia and I work as a UX designer at Visiba Care. And my role as a UX designer is to ensure that all the people that interact with our products uh, are getting the best possible experience. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about how we at Visiba uh, achieve this through collaborations. And I'm going to take an example of uh, uh, our newest product, uh, Red Robin. So uh, Visiba Care is a software development uh, company uh, that uh, enables patients to meet with their healthcare providers through a digital platform and through uh, apps and uh, web. And um, as many have talked about today, one of the challenges of health healthcare today is the increasing demand of care. And, uh, uh, this means that we need to come up with creative solutions to uh, be able to cope with this. And this is where our new product, Red Robin, comes into the picture. And Red Robin is an uh, automated um, AI-based um, triage and anamnesis tool. And uh, it's made to um, uh, be able to automate some parts of the patient flows. Um, but in order to uh, uh, make this a very smart product, we need to, uh, uh, as everyone says, we need to collaborate with different parts of uh, the sector. We, on one hand, we have the um, AI technology, and um, sorry, uh, this is my slide. We have the AI technology. We have uh, the medical aspects, and we also have the research and evidence side. Uh, and uh, this also needs to be combined to make up 
a medical core and an AI network then can be able to triage patients from to the right level of care. And the patients are uh, interacting with Red Robin through a chat where they can enter their healthcare problems. And uh, we can summarize the, uh, all the information and send it to uh, the healthcare provider pre presented in a um, good way. And here we need to include the patients and the healthcare provider together with all the other um, aspects. Uh, and this is a simplified little timeline of how we, in different steps of the product development process, have been able to do this. We uh, started off with uh, validating the medical side and uh, AI technology to find the right structure of the uh, base uh, of the network and the medical core. And then we went out with early prototypes to uh, validate these with at clinics with a few professionals and patients having research projects together with, uh, for example, Halmsta, and uh, then being able to have larger pilots digitally where we had larger volumes of patients and healthcare providers evaluating this. And in the future, we'll keep on continuously evaluating with um, longer research projects and together with our customers. Uh, and this is one example of uh, the physical uh, pilot where we very early evaluated uh, uh, a prototype of uh, Red Robin where we got to sit down with the patients before their meeting with healthcare providers and uh, uh, they got to try the chat on the iPad that we brought and uh, we then manually made a summary of the patient's healthcare problems and we sent it over to the healthcare provider. And uh, during these pilots, we got to um, get insights on how the patient would interact with uh, Red Robin. We got to discuss with them their overall attitudes to automated tools in healthcare. And um, we uh, also got to see the healthcare provider side where uh, we needed to see what information is relevant to present to them before a meeting and how can we best present it to for them to utilize it in a good way. Um, we then moved on to uh, research projects together with Halmstad where experts from different fields, one of them were Pontus, uh, got to do experts uh, evaluation on uh, some parts of the interface. And we had uh, experts in gender, interaction design, AI and linguistics. and. Uh, they brought off different parts that were very important, like uh, the feeling of inclusion, that you are included uh, no matter what gender you are, or uh, that everyone needs to understand the project to be able to access healthcare. And they also brought up an aspect, aspect of credibility, that um, in order to trust the solution, the patients, um, uh, we need to acknowledge like, if we do something wrong and if uh, um, we need to explain this to the patient and apologize for it, for them to trust us. Uh, and based on um, these uh, insights that uh, they had, we uh, started to, to uh, have a workshop together with experts to come up with idea to solve uh, how will all the patients understand uh, how Red Robin works and what is the value of Red Robin and how can we make everyone feel included. And this ultimately resulted in a new onboarding flow of Red Robin that before the patient entered the chat, uh, they get a short um, introduction of the product and uh, uh, what they have to expect. And we also added a new way for them to fill in their information in an easier way. Um, and this was something that we later on could evaluate in these uh, digital pilots, uh, where larger amounts of patients uh, um, could book a meeting through Red Robin, where we collaborated with our customer to set up the Red Robin in their uh, digital receptions. And from this, we could get a lot of user feedback from a short evaluation that we had uh, in the end of the chat. And uh, from this, we could understand, for example, that some of the ideas were very valuable, that 
um, the new introduction made uh, a huge difference for the patient. But other ideas like uh, the credibility aspects, uh, we could see that the patients didn't at all read our explanations or excuses. So uh, that we need to come up with a new idea to uh, make the product credible. And this is one of the great examples of why it's so important to look at different aspects and both include experts and the actual end user, which is the patient. And moving forward from this, we will uh, in the future continue with uh, um, more research projects and we will um, uh, have a continuous evaluation of the product as we do. And one example is uh, an upcoming research project with uh, Hamster University, again, where we're going to use uh, old medical uh, record data in order to validate the, the medical core, which is very exciting. Uh, and that's all for me, and you're happy to uh, ask questions in Dementi, if you like. Thank you very much.